God of War Ragnarok is right around the corner. There's so much I want to say, so much I can't tell you, but what I can discuss, I'm going to discuss with the man himself, the director of the game, Eric Williams. First and foremost, Eric, how are you? Congratulations on getting to this point. Um, it, and we're good. I, we still have a little ways to go, so you know, I don't, I don't count any chickens until they're hatched. So uh, you know, when when the ninth rolls around, we'll be happy. But uh, you know, we're excited. You know, it's it's been a long time, and the team's been through a lot. And you know, I'm very proud of what they put together. And I hope you're enjoying your playthrough so far. I am. I'm about five hours in, exploring Nidavellir at the moment. And I think the first thing that struck me, it's a very obvious thing to say, and I know this game is on both platforms, but it is bloody good looking. Yeah, uh, what are you, are you playing on PS5? I am. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's kind of crazy to me because the last two playthroughs I've done, I, I went back to base PS4, and it's, it's every bit as good. Like, that's what I love about our game, you know, and it's and we've, we've put in all the care into making sure that all of our fans from the previous that haven't been able to upgrade, you know, due to supply chains or cost or whatever, can still finish this story with us. But those that have moved on also get a stunning experience. And, you know, when we, we try to cover all the things with the dual sense and 3D audio and all those pieces that the PS5 have to offer, um, you know, and also not try to set a PS4 on fire, you know, by <laughs> pushing it to its absolute brink. But um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, a testament to this team. We care so much about our fans. So we just really want everyone to have that completion to the story, you know, the best way that they can. Sometimes it's the only way to protect the ones we love. Speaking of, there's not going to be a trilogy. I mean, Kratos and Atreus' story ends here, and there must be so much that you want to fit in, and amazing as the 2018 game was, we really didn't get to see Kratos as the god of war, and now we've already seen a certain character trying to claw that back out of him, which I'm, I'm really excited by. It, like, our idea with the last game was that, you know, he he kind of been retired, you know what I mean? And he, he's this father, and when Balder shows up, it's like, that's like knocking the rust off like really quickly. So he was a little rusty. That's why that fight took, you know, and then as that game progresses, the rust really starts to come off. And in between finishing, you know, Baldur off in the last game and the start of this game, him and Atreus have been training. So this is Kratos getting really back into it. He's ready to go if, if he needs to, but he's also trying to get his son there as well. You know, so it, it deals with this idea of him trying to let go of who he used to be, but he's trying to hold on to Atreus at the same time. And then Atreus is pushing, you know, more out into the world and it creates a little resistance to this because they finally are a team now and he doesn't want to lose that. So that's a little bit of where that conflict comes from in the beginning. I was taken aback by how quickly uh, a simple line of dialogue or an action is able to show how much that relationship has changed. I mean, very early on, you see Kratos say, I'll get the deer. He turns around and Atreus is already got it on his shoulders. I mean, time has passed and it shows that immediately the relationship is not the same. Atreus has grown up. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was very important to us to make sure that, like, if you're going to do a time jump, do it respectfully and don't expect the audience to have to clue in too much. It's just like, no, you you know, it's like when you do something with someone for a long time, it's you don't need, like, if you're working in a kitchen or whatever, like, you don't, you just know the dance. You don't have to constantly say a lot. It's like one or two words, you know where I am, you know what I'm doing, you know, behind corners, these type of things. We wanted to make sure that that was felt, excuse me, in the relationship. Whereas last time it was a lot of teaching, a lot of like this, do like this, listen to me, you know, I'm trying to, now it's like, no, you've learned those lessons, apply them. And then he's applying them to the point where dad is satisfied. His te you know, he's like, I taught you well, because you're, I don't need to know what you're doing. You turn around, you're already doing it. So that, that was very important to us. And I think you'll see that expand as you move through the, 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 your playthrough. It must be hard to start a game that's a sequel while still giving the player room to grow. I mean, when they've got all the old tricks from the first game, I think I was upgrading my armor with Sidri and immediately he said, what happened to all the old armor I gave you? And Kratos just grunts back, I used it. Yeah, we want resonance with our, uh, the dialogue that we put into the game. You know, like to our point, there's no no such thing as like main characters and secondary and third, like tertiary characters. It's like if you're on screen, you're on screen and you're important. So when you say something and you need to, you know, get that across. And I think even in the last trailer that we put out, there's some lines in there. People are just blown away by like there's like and they're, they just say them all the time. And we, we thought they were good, but we didn't you know, you don't know until, you know, and now we're like, oh, these really resonate with people. So even that that stuck with you, we try to keep them succinct to the point in the world. No extra exposition required. You know, it's just it, it does what the, 
the job is supposed to be. And I, I think that's when you have good storytelling, right? You want to kind of do the, the Hemingway six words, you know what I mean? If you, that's all you need, then that's all you need. You don't need to go on and on and on, you know? So uh, I'm glad that that landed for you. It has, and so is the combat. I mean, the Blades of Chaos, you can now use like a, a grappling hook of sorts, which feels amazing, but it did take me a little bit of time to get used to because obviously a lot of the movement options are, are tied to circle rather than X. Yeah, it, I mean, you don't want to, you don't ever want to, overload the player's cognitive load right so you kind of have to be like okay there's spatial awareness there's what i'm doing there's the enemy threats and then there's spatial awareness and then my meters you know so you want to make sure like w which one is you know pinging high what is frequency of use these type of things but what we did this game and this might help you to go in and look is if you are getting a little confused by that you know x and o you can change it you can alter the controls and flip them the way you like so if you're used to a game where the evade is on circle then go ahead and just move it over there, you know? And if you like it on X where we have it, great, you know? So like we wanted to make you, the player, have more expression overall. So not just through the, actually what you're doing, but even just the setup of the controller, the accessibility options and everything else. And then once you get deeper into the systems, you can really start to express, like you were saying, even with the armor and like how you kit the armor and the way you kind of like do set bonuses. And there's some things that are gonna come later that you'll see that can even expand that further. And you know, you, you, no one will probably be playing the same Kratos, you know, uh, and all of our gear can be taken to the end game as well. There's no, like, choice left behind. Like, if you make a choice early, it's not going to, like, screw you over. It's like you can kind of abandon it, you can come back to it, and it's still meaningful. So that was really important to us to allow you, the player, to decide a lot what's going on. And, you know, we didn't want to force your hand, because the narrative is linear. You don't get choice there, but we want to give you choice everywhere else, so then you still feel engaged. But you're like, I want to go for this ride, but I can make all the little choices along the way, you know, but the ride is going to be the ride. <laughs> it's fair to say this game is, is pretty linear at the beginning, but once you reach the second realm, the city of Nidavalir, it really opens up and it's almost begging for you to, to spend a bit of time there. And of course, I went straight for the exploration, which also provided um, some backstory on Mimir, which I wasn't expecting. So it got me thinking, like, how broad does this game get? How open and wide do those worlds get? Uh, that's a great question. Um, the way we describe our game is that it's wide linear, um, so that you're you're kind of on a path, but it'll open up from time to time and allow you to go different spaces. Um, what we've tried to do is give each of the realms a little bit of that, so how wide each realm gets is dependent on what we wanted to do with the story and the background of the characters that, you know, and people we've already had, it's like, well, you know Mimir and you know what he's about, but now this is a different side. And you're like, well, I'm curious immediately, right? Because he's always on my hip and he's always telling me things, so I want to know what he's about. And that's another way to pull you out there. It's not just, well, resources or this. There's many different things that are hitting them once you do explore our content. It's not just, oh, I should probably go do that because I don't want to be leveled back or, you know, gameplay systems. Because some people don't even know about that. They don't play games for those reasons. So there's a story reason to go. There's a gameplay reason to go. There's, you know, that's what we always try to layer it. So it's, there's no one reason to do anything. As you go to, deeper into the levels, you'll see they'll expand like this. Some of them you can come back to later, you know, with other tools to open up even more. So th there's a lot of little pieces that connect in there that, you know, give you that that reward if you want to go off the path. And if you just want to stay in the, the, the linear story, then like you're going to be rewarded for that as well. Look, the story itself is pretty rewarding alone, I think. And it starts at a, a massive pace. I mean... You've got Freya chasing you, you fight something that looks like a centaur, you fight this gigantic bear, which I can't really discuss, and then of course, you fight Thor. I mean, it is it is punch after punch after punch right out the gate. Yeah, and that was a deliberate choice again, because time had passed, so we didn't, you know, it, it could seem slow, but if you put enough of the right pieces that, that you know, into the puzzle, then you're like, oh, okay, like, I, need, I wanted to know what happened with Freya. Okay, she's still mad at us. You know, I wanted to know what happened. Um, excuse me with the dream you know that we ended the last game with with thor right and you're gonna find what happens um and then there's some some special stuff also put in between there right to, to get you through a lot of the other pieces so we we want the first hour to be almost like that's you got your money's worth you know what i mean and it's like the rest of the game now is just okay yeah more right let's go but it's like you're bought in at that point in time and I think, you know, good films do that. They get you in the first 10 minutes, you know, where you're like, okay, I'm bought in. Or good TV show, right? Like, you're like, okay, I'm like, that last 10 minutes of episode one, you're just like, bam. Because that's like an hour, right? For a good show, like 45 minutes. And so they, they, they're kind of set up that way. So we've looked at a lot of media that we appreciate, that we love. And we tried to pace it out in a way that we felt like was like, okay, we can get you back on. We can teach you the acts. We can teach you the blades. We can get the big moments. And you're like, okay, I'm into the story. 
And the other thing that's really difficult is, you know, we, we, we looked at media a lot and you look at Avengers and then you look at Avengers Endgame and Avengers Endgame almost makes twice as much money. That's almost impossible to understand. Like, did these people just go see this movie and not watch the previous one? And they did. And so we were thinking the same thing's gonna happen. We're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna come to this game and not have played the other game. So how do you onboard them, but also pay respect to your fans that did have that big you know, experience from 2018. And that I think was the most difficult thing. Like how do you thread all that at the beginning? And that's why we have the recap at the beginning of the game. Like, did you watch the recap? I, I didn't actually, because I just replayed the first game. Yeah, and it's, it's another way in, right? Since we want everyone to play and we want you to be able to find your own way into the story. So that's why we, we kind of, you know, rapid fire in the beginning just to get everybody's like, you know, okay, we're all on the same page now, let's go. And then when you go to Spartelheim, it's like, okay, we're all doing the same thing now. I find it really interesting to hear your take on this because we all know that you've taken over after Corey Barlog did uh, such a great job on the first game and it must just add to that pressure leading a team that's making a game which everyone is sort of expecting to be, you know, the, the game of the year for 2022. Um, yeah, I, I kind of don't look at it like that. I, I've worked with Corey for 20 years. Like we've been partners. I've always been kind of the guy behind the scenes helping him get where he needs to be. And, and I love that relationship. And this time he was like, you just should be the one out front. And he's like, I'm tired. I need a break. I trust you. You know, go do it. And when you have that kind of person that you have that much respect with, where we're, we're brutally honest with each other. When we don't like something, we just tell each other, you know, and, you know. Not getting shouting matches, but you know, there's a little like posturing of like, okay, like maybe you're right today, I'll be right tomorrow. But when you have that kind of level of trust, you somebody wouldn't tell you that if they didn't believe it. And so then once you get that behind you and you kinda I was looking for a new challenge and you know just the stars kinda lined up that this would be the one. Now obviously yes, there is pressure, but the pressure is more of a responsibility to the team. You know, like they, they worked so hard to get the franchise back on track, so you don't want to let them down. You know, and the other part is I don't want to let the fans down. So I didn't want this to be like, Corey's got a war and Eric's got a war. I wanted this to be God of War, the Norse saga. And if I'm almost invisible in this and you feel like it's like Corey secretly behind the wheel, then so be it. That I, To me, that's the best job because I don't want it to be like, well, I like that and I don't like this or I like, you know what I mean? You want it to be continuous, almost like the way a book would be written in chapters. So um, that was like the goal to try to do that and we had a lot of the returning people from the narrative team from the design team People have been here forever the animation crew, you know So it's like the the heart of the team was still strong and they've been through many God of Wars and most of them on 2018 We brought in a lot of you know young people are ready to go to and a couple vets from other places And you want to build that diamond team, you know, that's that's just set up right to do it And, and we had it and the only thing it kind of like was a uh stumbling was the COVID. We didn't, you know, nobody could predict that and what happened with it. And again, I don't want that to be the story of this game, you know, because it's like this team, I respect them too much to be like, well, these had to happen. You know, we didn't sacrifice anything. We went in with a plan in like late 2018, it was ready to go. And then we just pushed through it the entire time. So yeah, the, there's pressure, don't get me wrong, but we try not to look at it from that point of view. We look at it more on ourselves because we're our harshest critics. Like we want to deliver for everyone, you know, not to what the world wants. Because if we make what we believe in, which was 2018, then the world believes in it too. Well, obviously, that's a great attitude to have. And if there has been any impact with COVID, I certainly haven't been able to notice it straight away. I think one of the, the criticisms leveled at the first game was a, a lack of enemy variety. But already I have fought so many different Things, so many different creatures. I absolutely hate that frog human thing that spits poison at you. Uh, it is the worst, but it feels like you made a, a real deliberate effort there. Yeah, 100% conscious. I mean, if we could have done that in 2018, we would have, but there's just, you know, when you're, when you're rebuilding everything from scratch, there's places you have to say, okay, we got to put an end to this or the game's never going to come out, you know? So like, um, we already knew what we wanted to do and how we wanted to improve those. Having been through the transition from God of War 1 to God of War 2 and Chains of Olympus to Ghost of Sparta, there's kind of a little bit of a formula, like how much you need to add and how you expand it. And and you also know a lot of what you're doing now, so it's easier to make more. Um, and everybody's kind of bought in. There's not as much like, hmm, is this gonna work? It's like, yeah, hey, don't worry, we'll just do these guys too. So the team was more like equipped to do it. It's also scary because you're like, well, more is more. It's And it has to be just as good. You can't just put more in, it has to be more and good. So if not great. So we, we kind of have this mentality that all eights make a 10. Like if everything in the cross, the entire game, doesn't matter from like the smallest little music note to the biggest giant monster, is there, it, it's the, you know, all, all ships rise and tide kind of idea, right? It's, and then you can't, 
you can't pick it apart. So we want to make sure everything was there. And since that was one of the complaints, we were like, okay, like attack that right out of the gate. That was one of the first things we did. We built this enemy list. And I think from that enemy list, like only one monster didn't make it, you know, in this, in this game. Whereas in the last game, there's probably like six or seven that didn't make it. So if you're already feeling the, the variety, you're, it will continue, I promise you that. What was the one that didn't make it? I can't even remember now. I'd have to go back and look at documents from four years ago. <laughs> Usually we put one in there just as almost like the sacrificial lamb. Like you, the producer's like, you got to cut something. We're like that one, you know what I mean? And you had no intention of putting it in anyhow. So like, yeah. I'm telling you terrible secrets now. You see, you got me talking. Thanks to the trailers, we already know that so much more is going to come in this game uh, after the five hours that we've been allowed to discuss. I mean, we still have to see that wolf. We've still got to see Atreus shoot that arrow at the moon. I don't know what's going on there. And hopefully, hopefully we get to see uh, Kratos really return as, as the god of war. So, I mean, what surprises around the corner for these players? What would you like to leave players with? You know, it's going to sound like a cop-out answer, but I don't I don't have one thing or anything that I want them to take away. I hope we entertain them. I hope that we're worth their time, you know, like, our, like the, the thing we crafted is, is you know, I, I think of it like this. When I was young, I would, you know, go mow grass and cut weeds and all this stuff to make enough money to buy one game for the summer to play in the fall. And you wanted that game to be good. And I, that's the way I treat everything we make is I, I want you know, if somebody was to do that or to spend their paycheck or like some of their paycheck on this, that they're satisfied. They're very happy with their purchase and that they're entertained, you know, and maybe there's something to think about and take away as well. You know, there's a lot of heart in the game from like families and found families, um, you know, in this concept of you know parent and child and what that means and how to grow as a person. But, you know, we want to entertain you. It's a game. You want to have fun at the same time. So it's like it's balancing act. And if somebody's just entertained, that's great. If somebody has like a moral epiphany, great. <laughs> like, I, I don't have this one thing. We put a lot in and whatever lands, lands. And I hope, you know, it's in a positive way. Returning to this world, we're obviously returning to a, a lot of the areas that we explored back in 2018. But Ragnarok, this this arrival of the end of times has made things look really different. Yeah, so Fimble Winter, uh, the last three years has been affecting the realms in different ways. Um, you've seen Midgard, it's frozen and You've seen a bit of Svartalheim where there's some, you know, seismic activity and, and whatnot going on. I'm not going to spoil the rest, but, you know, as as where they sit on the tree, it, it changes how much they're affected. They're not all affected in the same way and at the same severity. You mentioned Marvel's Avengers, and obviously we all have a, a vision of what Thor is in our minds, being, you know, a, a buff Chris Hemsworth. But your Thor is very different. <laughs> He's very different. That was intentional. You know, like I, I've gone on record that we just wanted him to be a big boy. You know, like we look at mythology as a reference point, but we don't adhere to it. Obviously, Kratos is not part of Norse <laughs> or Greek mythology. So he's already agent of chaos. So when we find what we think is an interesting matchup for Kratos, or the way we want the character to behave or treat, you know, we'll pluck things that we like and discard other ones and we kind of make it our own. So we put the Santa Monica paint on it, if you will. So that's why he is the way he is. <clears throat> You'll see more as you, as he develops. How much more rage fueled can Kratos get by the end of this game? A Kratos? Yes. Oh, you're gonna have to wait to see. I'm not gonna spoil it. Once you're done with the Norse mythology, is there a, another pantheon of gods you'd like to explore? Oh, you get yeah. I can't answer that. You can't answer that. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, you know, there might be one that just tickles your fancy. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see what the cards have in the future. The way the original was presented with that one camera shot made it really stand out back in 2018 and obviously that that returns this time around which makes it feel like one continuous game almost and i'm interested because no one else has really tried that is it because it's so tough i mean no one's certainly done it to the extent that you have in a in a big triple a title um i think i think another game has done it it's difficult it's extremely difficult the th the reason why we did it is we really wanted you to feel like you were with them like you lived the day with them and that's still kind of the idea you know when we talk about it like we'll do like we have this big norse mythology but we also do very small slice of life moments you know what i mean and if you cut around it's hard to keep that feeling of like you going through your day right if somebody follows you over your shoulder the whole day at your office and you're going to lunch and all this guy it's very different than if they were to cut it up like a tv show you know so and there's nothing wrong with the other approach but we wanted to have that documentary and kind of dirty gritty lived in day and that's why. So it's not like it's not done as like a, well, look at us. It's like it's done for a very specific re reason to the narrative and the way we want people to view the narrative. Um, so, yeah. 
We have to mention Atreus, and we, we can't talk about uh, a lot of the details here, but but something is going on with that kid, and uh, it's it's pretty weird already. Yeah, definitely. He's, uh, you know, he is his father's son, but he's also his mother's son, and that's part of the problem for Kratos is that he can't fill that part. He didn't even know Faye was a giant, you know what I mean? And now he can't express that part of his life to Atreus. So Atreus has this wanting, but he also has this respect for his father because they finally built a bond, and that's a tough place to be as a you know, like 12 to 14 year old kid. So, you know, we'll see where that goes. I certainly can't wait to play the rest of this game. The first five hours has been everything I expected and more, I suppose. So thank you for that, Eric. And thank you so much for your time. Uh, as we wrap this up, the floor is yours. Well, I mean, if, if I'm getting a parting shot, I just want to thank my team. You know, like the, everybody here at Santa Monica from up in San Mateo, all the way down to everyone at their homes, like working on this game to all of our external partners all over the world that help us build this monster game. Like, thank you so much. It's 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 been an honor to work with all of you. And, and I mean, they're the best. I can't say anything more than that. Fate only binds you if you let it. Do what is necessary. Not because it is written.